The quickest way to get YouTube to start pushing your video in front of more people is to create a solid journey for your viewer to follow. This will not only get people to click and watch your video, but to spend more time watching your content as well, giving you more watch time and better performance overall. What do we mean by the viewer's journey? Well, in today's channel review of Happiness Adventures, Lennon Bone, a YouTube strategist here on our team, is going to dive into the very first steps of that viewer's journey with their channel. And you're going to learn how the video is Title, thumbnail, and opening hook in the first few seconds of the video really makes a big difference in how that viewer continues to watch that content. Here's Lennon to share more. Hey friend, this is Lennon. I am one of the strategists here on the Video Creators team. I am reviewing Happiness Adventure and their channel here on YouTube today. They are one of our channel members. What I notice here is that the channel has been around for about a year and they're still not getting a ton of views. Probably on average, you know, 50 to 100, something like that. I think a lot of what is happening with this channel has to do with the beginning of of the viewer's journey, which is the title and thumbnail. And then beyond that, the beginning of the video. Because what I see here is that some of these videos, for instance, Happiness Hacks from Brain Researchers, that video has 1.1 thousand views, which means it's getting some clicks, but it's not really taking off any further than that. So the first thing I would think about here is the title itself. What is the title supposed to do? The title is supposed to deliver the actual value of the video. For instance, stop feeling isolated. So the main thing I think about here is who is trying to stop feeling isolated? Why are we trying to stop feeling isolated? And even beyond that, what is it that we're avoiding by actually stopping that feeling? And then within the thumbnail, I see the text seven keys to the best friendships. So this makes me think, okay, this is about building more relationships in our life so that we can stop feeling that isolation. So a better title might be avoid feeling alone with your friends because that's kind of a feeling that people that are dealing with maybe depression or isolation usually feel. They feel alone when they're actually in their friend groups. So we're giving a little more specificity to what the problem is and how that problem is actually going to be solved. The thumbnail highlights the text versus the story, but what I would like to see is the opposite. Let's let the thumbnail really tell the story of the title. What might be better is to have a group of people that are hanging out and one person is just blatantly depressed or feeling lonely. You can just tell that something's not right within that group. Rather than just having the picture of what I know after watching the video is just the interviewee here. Just telling that story with the thumbnail and not making the text the focal point, but the story itself. And then the third point I wanna make here is just the hook of the video. So let's say that I was doing the hook for the video. My target audience here might be people that I know are struggling with depression or anxiety and they're wanting to build friendships but they don't necessarily know how because they still feel isolated even in those situations. So my opening hook would be something like, if you're anything like me, you can be at a party around all your friends and still feel completely alone. You can feel like it doesn't matter what anybody says or how much somebody engages with you, you're still isolated. You're cut off from the pack and you want to build relationships, but you're not really sure how. So today we're going to talk about uh, three ways that we can start to build relationships, bring ourselves out of that isolation and into a community that's actually going to help us to connect better with others. So you can see here that I've presented the problem. I've talked a little bit about specific pain points and then I'm letting you know how we're going to isolate and fix the problem on the other side of this video. So one last thing I want to say about this channel, there's a lot of great interview style content, but this long form interview style content doesn't always work the best on YouTube. This feels a little more like a podcast interview or something sometimes. My suggestion to you, if you want to do more long form interviews, would actually be to make sure that your hook A is really, really strong, or also to consider creating more short form content that isolates a specific part of the interview and lets somebody know the real value that they want right away and then can put them or steer them back into the long form interview if you like. A channel that does this really well is Matt Diavella. He does a great job of kind of cutting up and giving you just the brass 
tax of like what it is that he and his interviewee are talking about. And then he'll steer you to the more long form podcast interview on a separate channel. We actually walk you through an entire checklist of everything you need to do on your very next video to ensure that it gets the most amount of growth possible. You can click that video you see on your screen right there to get into that. And if you would love to have your channel reviewed by someone on my team, an upcoming channel review here on this channel, you become a channel member by clicking the join button down below this video at the advice level. We will add you to the queue. So click that video and I'll see you guys over there.